Hi folks, Phil from Productive here. Now a few weeks ago I was asked to do a lunch and learn with a client on the Pivot app and this presented me with an opportunity because I hadn't picked it up for a while and originally when I started looking at it I found it a little bit cumbersome to use and I hadn't really invested myself in learning it to its fullest extent. So I dug out Rich's old video and a few other materials and I really went deep on it and um, it's, I suddenly had this moment where I thought hang on a second this solves a very specific problem that I've been working on for a client. And that is trying to get multi-dimensional charting at a portfolio level. Now, one of the issues that you have when you're trying to do roll-up metrics is that you kind of have to define so every combination of metric that you're looking for. So if you've got multiple categories on a timeline, you need to pre-configure those. The Pivot app gets around this in quite a neat way, and I'm going to show you that. But before I do so, um, I just wanted to say that at Productive, this is the sort of thing that we're doing day in, day out. We love hearing from people and um, the challenges that they're looking to solve for. So do get in contact if you've got anything you're wrestling with and we'd be delighted to help you. And with that, let's take a look. We start here with the project view, uh, which is showing a, a couple of uh, categories of, of expenditure on a time scale. So it's a two dimensional matrix effectively. Uh, it's done from a single sheet. It's nice and simple to put together. And from a project level, it gives you everything that you need. Um, but what we're really after is to try and create something like this that covers multiple projects. So as you can see here, we have a timeline. It's looking quite similar. We have the same categories, but you can see that there's more data being fed in here. And what I have is two projects in which the, um, it's got the same uh, cost profile, uh, but they're, they're shifted by three months. So you can see the second project kicks in about here and, um, and all, the, um, all the peaks get slightly wider than they were in the original. So um, if you look, the original timeline started um, at 09, 2023. And if we look at project B, it starts at 12, 2023. And what we're going to do as part of this, we're going to add in a project C and I'll show you how that works. But let's have a look at some of the sheets now. This is the sheet that's sitting behind the chart for the first project. So you can see we've got the time scale on the left here and we have the different categories plus a total. Very straightforward, as I mentioned. Um, but when you come to try and roll something like this up into a portfolio view, yes, you could put your, uh, your time frame together, uh, but what if that time frame sh starts shifting? How do you define what window you're going to be looking at for your chart? And then how do you then do lookups across all the different projects that have got these multiple dimensions? So the way you do it is to leverage the fact that you can put, uh, you can put a pivot, you can base a pivot chart off a report. And so if you feed all your project information into that report and create a pivot uh, sheet off the back of it, you can then start to manipulate that data and have it update dynamically every time you've, you've scheduled your pivot to run. But before you do that, one of the things you, ha you have to look at is how you're going to arrange your columns. I want to have the same look to this table, so I'm going to have my columns being the, uh, the different categories in the total. Uh, but the problem with that is you can only define one column to, uh, to be uh, the source of the, that creates your columns in the pivot. And so what you have to do is put an intermediate sheet in place that then look for each of the, uh, the categories with a, uh, the column called category. And that way you fit, I've got three categories here and I'm gonna feed each of those sheets into the report and then, um, then it will use that category to define the different columns when it comes out in the pivot. This will become a lot clearer when I actually show you what the pivot sheet looks like. Here we have the report that is feeding the pivot. And as you can see, we have six sheets that are currently uh, being input into it. Um, and each one comes from one of the two projects that, that we've been looking at. Um, so you've got a, a sheet for expenses, labor and materials for each project. And I've just pre-selected uh, the same sheets for, um, for project C. So we click OK and the number of sheets will update to nine. And now we've got data vertically that covers all three projects for all categories, which is great. If we move into the pivot now, uh, all I need to do, this is just the um, effectively the preview uh, window saying I want to run this again because I've set it to run manually. I could have created it um, to run on a schedule, um, but uh, and that's what you would probably do in real life. Um, but for purposes of this, I don't need that. And I hit create and what that's going to do is it's going to update the pivot sheet. This is the pivot sheet that the pivot app is updating 
And as you can see, it has a very similar format to the original one that I used for creating the charts. Um, but as you, you'll be able to uh, look down the rows and see that these aren't in order. This is a, this is a bit of a mishmash of, of the information as it's come in, as, the, um, as the, uh, the pivot has been updated. And also, because the timeline has grown, there are more rows in here than there were in the, uh, in the previous iteration of it. And so if I just, uh, if I just uh, selected a chart range um, across those and that chart range had grown, it wouldn't necessarily have given me what I wanted. So the final step is to create um, a, a categorized uh, portfolio view. So this is exactly the same format as the, uh, as the original sheets. And it has the 30 month window that I'm interested in, which I can, I can update whenever I want to, or I could, I could have it update automatically each time a month rolls over. And then I do a lookup against each, each month and doing a sum collect, sorry, an index collect on those values. And, um, and that's just pulling it in into a, a fixed uh, fixed frame that I can then I can then chart off. So this is effectively what the what the pivots allow me to do. If I just go back to the pivot sheet again, um, I set that up to be doing a sum against each of the um, the month year combinations um, against the different categories as well. So you can see that those those are all kind of if we looked at those versus the individuals for each project, you'll be able to see how those have changed. Um, and then finally we'll go and have a look at what the graph is looking like. And we will probably need to refresh this. So we'll just give it a moment. And here we are, I pushed, I pushed out the timeline on the third project quite some way. So we had something a little bit more interesting to look at. But as you can see, uh, the additional rows, um, of the additional sheets have added the values in at a portfolio level. So it's the same time frame. Uh, that we were looking at originally so that's 30 months from the uh, 0923 and um, but yeah for for both the the chart types that I've created here um, however many projects I add in and if you think about how you would uh, implement this in a control center build if you use that report as a dynamic scope report and you feed the three uh, the three feed sheets that um, are coming from the project template into it each time it's a it's a one click as soon as that project uh, gets provisioned those three projects will be put into that dynamic scope report and whenever you scheduled your uh, your pivot to run it will update so there you have it i hope you agree that it's a pretty powerful uh, method of doing some roll-up reporting at a much larger scale in a way that's automated and as i said if you do combine it in with a control center solution then you're absolutely laughing so if this has been of use do comment do like do all the good things that help get this um, this content out to the wider smartsheet community and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care now.